From that prelude this morning, we want to thank certain people, especially Daniel Ani, who plays that for us this morning, our organist choir director here at Christ Lutheran Church, Inner Harbor, Baltimore. Sarah Berger is our soloist, and our production thanks to John Miller and Sandra Anderson. I'm Pastor Jim Cobb with Pastor Judy Cobb, Pastor Patrick Ballard, who serve with this virtual worship that we experience through this time together. We're thankful for our helpers. We have a few announcements to make. We continue to ask our membership to look at our website in order to complete a survey that's used with our ministry site profile. We also have started a Sunday school time at 945 on Sundays via Zoom, and also our confirmation is at that time. And on May 3rd, we will begin with an adult forum that will be at 9 a.m. We'll put that out in our e-notes shortly. We want to thank people who supported our shelter. Baltimore Outreach Services was unable to do the gala event that they usually do each year. But this year, with an online auction and with PayPal and with some fund a grant pieces and some sponsorships, they had a goal of $80,000 for our shelter, and over $91,000 was raised. Generosity still abounds in this time, and we are thankful, grateful for all who contribute and support the resources of our church as best we can. Thank you for those gifts. Thank you for the gifts that come to our church to enable these things to continue. These are our announcements for today, and in a moment we will begin our worship with what's called Thanksgiving for Baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for this gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for the salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, What should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the purpose is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, 
Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. I want to take a few moments with children to say that if you heard that story, you know that the people who were walking along, they were sad. Sometimes all of us have that feeling of being sad and being alone. They did not know who the stranger was who accompanied them at first. I think there's a message in there for us. Sometimes we feel alone and sad, especially in this time. Children who can't go to school, can't necessarily be with their friends. It's that kind of sadness I remember my son one day came up to me and he said, Daddy, are you happy? And I said, yes. And I looked at him like, you know, what's he going to say next? And he said, I don't think you told your face. And that got a big grin from me. Of course, maybe I hadn't communicated to my face that there was happiness to be shared. But that child in speaking that made me realize that sometimes the way we look the way we are is something that is happy and joyous, and children can be that for their parents, and parents can be that for their children. Sometimes we're sharing ourselves and the love we have with one another in our family units, with our parents, even if we have to use a social medium and maybe see friends on a screen our telephone, we are sharing ourselves. And in doing that, we become light for somebody. You know, the church uses a lot of light, candlelight. This is called a Paschal candle, the Easter candle. And this, this candle is lit for these 50 days of Easter. And when someone is baptized here at the baptismal font, we light a candle and hand it to them and say, you are the light, Jesus is the light of the world, and 
You let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. What a good thing it is. And that brings me to my favorite song. And if we have even some of our nursery school students watching today, you know that I've taught this in chapel, where you make a candle with your finger. And it's this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. We're not going to put it under a bushel, no. And we're not going to let anyone wish it out. So if you can sing along with me, let's try it. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Put it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Put it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Put it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let anyone woof it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let anyone woof it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let anyone woof it out. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So children can be a light to other people by sharing your joy and happiness. When your emotions are sad and alone, one of the things this story we heard as a gospel for today says, no, you're not by yourself. You will always be accompanied by Jesus, a Jesus who hears your prayers, a Jesus who knows your feelings, and a Jesus who has made you part of himself in this body of Christ called the church. Never alone. Even when sadness comes, whether sad or happy, Christ is with us always. And that's the story, I think, that comes from this road walk to a village called Emmaus. I hope you have a good day and a blessed day as you let your light shine before others that they may see your good works. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So St. Luke brings us this story entitled The Walk to Emmaus. And the church places it in the readings for the Easter season. I wonder sometimes if you think about what is your favorite part of Scripture. Maybe it's a verse or a passage or a story. Many, I think, would say John 3.16. Others might say the 23rd Psalm. But one of the candidates might be this very story, the road to Emmaus. In fact, Pastor Judy Cobb wants this as her funeral text, but thankfully, not yet. She has put me on notice that should I survive her, this is it, Luke 24, 13 to 35. And if I don't survive her, she'll put it in funeral notes for Bishop Gold. Anyway, this story has been inspirational in many ways. Rembrandt has a famous painting of his imagination of three people huddled together as they journey on a road with a conversation while walking along. The 19th century hymn writer Henry Light used this scripture for inspiring a familiar hymn entitled, Abide With Me. We heard that as the prelude this morning. Thank you, Daniel. Some might choose this narrative as a favorite piece of scripture. And today I want us to consider the elements of this story. This story does involve emotion, encounter, and excitement. First, there is the matter of emotion. A couple of guys have left Jerusalem for a suburban village. They're getting in 14,000 steps and good fresh air on this Easter evening trek. St. Luke says it, seven miles. Their doctor would commend their physical activity. Their emotion is one of sadness, despondence, desolation. 
they are not sheltering in place like the 11 apostles. This Tusum was out and about, leaving town, scattering, out of sight, out of reach, getting to some place they thought would be safe. Their downcast sadness is interrupted by a stranger who joins them on the way, who asks a question that we might translate an Aramaic Jerusalem jive. What's up? And now the two of them get animated because an encounter is going to happen. What do you mean, what's up? You mean you haven't heard the Jerusalem news? You don't know what's happened to the one named Jesus, how many of us thought he would be our Messiah, but they killed him on a cross. And now that stranger's encounter gets them into a lively conversation. The stranger has heard about these things, and he'll relay some news for them to connect the dots. They say the newest rumor is that some women that very morning went to the tomb. They said the dead body wasn't there. But there was an angelic vision proclaiming that the dead one was alive. Now what do you make of that? And then the stranger goes into a narration about what he had said to his followers and about what the ancient prophets had forecast and even what Moses had predicted and how it included suffering and dying. Whoa, who was this stranger who knew so much? Was he a religious fanatic? Was he a seminary professor? Who was he? And he walked on ahead, about to leave them when they gave invitation. It's evening. Abide with us for a while. We need something to eat. So he goes in with them to table to abide with them. And while he was at table, the meal included some bread. He took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. And then they recognized, get ready, it's Jesus. But then he vanishes from their sight. And now they're astounded. Now the adrenaline is pumping. Did not our hearts burn with excitement and joy? Now they're no longer headed away from Jerusalem, but they're going back to Jerusalem to find the eleven and their companions and they hear another report that he has appeared to Simon, and they jump in with their news, how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. Emotion. Encounter. Excitement. St. Luke writes for us to hear and receive again the Re resurrection's proclamation. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, I could say amen and stop the sermon there, but some of you out there in social media would like that I would, but there are a few more things to say. I have a bias about Scripture, and it is this. That often in the narratives of the Bible, we are written in, into the story. Scripture invites us in. Some of the very characters in Scripture are us. So what roads do we travel? Not to Emmaus, but to Glen Burnie, Catonsville, Towson, Severna Park, Dundalk, Bel Air, Arbutus, Columbia, Laurel, some of the towns of our members in this place. What streets do we travel? Charles Street, Light Street, Pratt Street, at times, those places for you and where you live and where you travel have been the scenes of emotion, even sometimes sadnesses. Maybe it's been a disappointment in ourselves or a sadness and grief with accidents or diagnosis that we found hard to hear. And we've all lost loved ones who now rest in the company of the saints in light, but their absence from us is a black hole fueled by grief. Emotions run the gamut from sadness and general malaise 
to outright depression, especially in these times of disrupted life as we have known it. Emotions, sometimes downcast and despondent on our roads, our walks, our travels. But then in such times as these, there come encounters, lifelines thrown out to us by a living Christ. We proclaim a living Christ who encounters us, intercepts us, and joins with us to rescue and redeem. In the church's celebration of Easter, we hear in preaching, songs, solos, that real, solid, promised comfort and the certainty of a Christ who has conquered death. And the church, this body of the living Christ, is commissioned to go and speak this good news. The church, the body of the living Christ, encounters the wit written word of God when scriptures are heard and studied as we hear and long for hearing our family history with God since the creation began. And God gives us those lifelines when the sacrament of holy baptism makes us a child of God. And now, in such a time as this, when we cannot gather to sip the wine and taste the bread gathered in his name, we begin to hunger and thirst and wait for that time when we can be at his table where he is the host. And like the Emmaus story, takes that bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to his people and reveals himself to us. And yet in the meantime, we are excited to hear and to believe. We are excited that Christ accompanies us wherever we go, wherever we are. We are excited to continue learning of the law and the prophets who prepared the way towards Scripture's fulfillment. We're joyously excited to know that our Christ has us and has this whole world in his hands. This Christ is the light of the world. And when he made you a part of his kingdom, he commissioned us with these words. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank God for this story of Emmaus. God knows our great range of emotions from sad to glad, from high to low, from up to down. And yet God insists on encountering us in conversations and circumstances and wherever the God whispers and the God nudges appear. God encountering us in the wit written word of scripture, the oral word of preaching, the visible word in sacraments, and maybe the heart pounds and beats a little faster with joy and excitement when our God reveals that risen living Christ who conquers sin and death and bequeaths that life to us, this life and the one to come. All because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
with the whole Christian church on earth, we recall the creed spoken on the day of our baptism that continues to shape our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each petition will end, Lord, in your mercy, and please respond. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are discouraged and grieving, like the disciples were who traveled to Emmaus. Dear Lord, hear our sighs and disappointments. Help us to be aware that you are present with us just as you were with those on the Emmaus walk. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel. Empower all of us to tell the story of your love in our lives. May each of us be bold to shout, I have seen the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for those who take care of us, parents and friends and teachers, medical staff, food providers, those who work while we sleep, police and military leaders and cleaners. Lord, in your mercy. We are blessed by those who show hospitality. Give us the heart for welcome and the words to say, come to our country, come to our worship, come to a place without judgment, come to our tables. Lord, in your mercy. For all who call upon you or healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all who are sheltered, those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, desiring healing in body and spirit. We pray especially for all those on our prayer list and those whose names we lift aloud to you in our homes and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. For the faith formation ministries of this church, for those who participate in Sunday school and adult education and Bible study and confirmation youth ministry, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Lord, in your mercy. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please share with those um, that you're near or throughout the whole week. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. This is the point at which we would usually receive your offering. We thank you for 
your financial gifts, and we ask you to please continue to provide generously for the work of the church. Now we speak the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light and darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord,
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.